it is firmly believed if we pray and reflect under the shadow of the cross of Christ our dark days our dark days will become bright days because the providence of god presides over human affairs dear parents brothers and sisters and little children if we look around the world and the people who rejected god has never achieved tranquility harmony happiness and unity but we see a negative expression of the depression sadness suicidal tendencies which are becoming very disturbing factors in the life of many today we need god's mercy we need god's healing healing for the broken hearted in response to god's mercy love and care we need to forgive the people who are unforgivable we need to love the people who are unlovable we need to take care of the uncared and the downtrodden god's love mercy and care can be very astonishing and very marvelous for a believer but for the modern world speaking about love mercy and care of god can be a foolish thing because men cast their lots gamble with their misdeeds create chaos and confusion in the world and move the wheels of history with blood stained hands but my dear friends the providence of god that presides over human lives finally brings order out of a chaos before we comment of briefly the first reading let us look into the history of israel very briefly the history of israel was largely a history of chaos the jews suffered a collapse at the hands of a foreign power and they were deported to exile in babylon you can see the expression of their grief in psalm 137 and by the streams of babylon they sat and wept however just when it seemed as if all were over for them when they lost hope king cyrus of persia inspired by god not only released them from exile but also helped them to rebuild their temple the second chronicle 36 uh, 20 to 23 the first reading thus god's mercy overcame his own wrath drawing his own people through their chaotic history closer to himself deuteronomy chapter 1 to 8 we can see generally a uh, god has never uh, taken away his mercy and love from the people and the first reading today very specially invites all of us my dear friends to reflect on our own personal and communal shortcomings or we say chaotic life our failures our sins and turn to god for compassion forgiveness and mercy today we are reminded that god sent messengers as we see in the first reading early and often this is the source of our hope today 
This is the source for our rejoicing, our happiness. That is why we call like Hare the rejoicing Sunday, the fourth Sunday of the uh, Sunday of Lent is considered to be like Hare Sunday, rejoicing Sunday, because God forgives, God sent the messengers. God continues to send the messengers earlier and often, almost every day to us, calling us to have conversion, calling us to have a kind of change within our hearts, calling us to have a fruitful growth. We say that God sends messengers to us every day. Who are these messengers? You know them? Who are these messengers? Please find out and get back with me next Sunday. Eh? Let me know. That is our assignment today. And besides that assignment, I have another responsibility for all of us. It is up to us to respond to God's call for conversion. We all feel that we need a conversion, but it is up to us how, when, and where we can respond to God's conversion. I said it is our freedom. It is up to us. A freedom is given to each believer God's law and his mercy make us to understand what makes us fully happy and alive and to be free. I like to take following analogy from a personal reflection of professor of theology, Dr. Tim, uh, St. Augustine's Uni um, Institute of uh, Theology about personal, personal freedom and conversion. He uses an analogy to show the need of conversion, a spiritual conversion. He says, I think of my car. I think of my car which needs an oil change. This is the law. After running so much miles, the oil of the car has to be changed. The personal freedom tells me, this is my car. I am not going to put new oil in my car. Well, if I disobey that law, I am neither going to be free nor the car because my car will get overheat and the engine will lock up and the engine will be ruined and I may not be able to drive my car anymore. Our spiritual life can be compared to this car which needs an oil change. God knows the human hearts and his laws are the ones that make human hearts thrive. It is the time to put a new oil of God's love and mercy and care, or simply to say, take the personal freedom, personal responsibility, personal freedom to allow God to change our hearts and to be free to live with God-given goodness in our hearts. I like today all of us to have this thought of conversion. This thought of conversion. After surrendering all our iniquities, after surrendering all our shortcomings, failures, and sins before the Lord, we will continue to pray with hope and courage. As we continue to pray, we will receive God's mercy and we can understand how God loves us. And let me conclude with the short comment on the gospel. St. John simply tells each one of us today 
how god showed his love not only through giving us laws not only giving us guidance not only through assuring us with eternal life and hope and courage but god gave his only son for the redemption of all of us and we firmly believe we firmly believe and we live according to the belief that we have john chapter 3 verse 16 is the strongest verse or the foundation stone of our christian life and love for god and seeking god's mercy god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life i am sure my dear friends this is the central message of the gospel this is the good news god loves us first and second he gives us salvation as a gift that we see in the second reading god is so rich in mercy and my dear friends today we have to love or imitate the love like that of god all embracing love because god sent the son for the world not for the few groups not for the favorites or nations but god sent his son for the world we are invited today ponder this all embracing love of god for the world as saint augustine says god loves each one of us as if there was only one of us to love amen let us all stand for the profession of faith